Okay, uh, hello, welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to uh, look at the basics of classes and, and, and I'll practical, talk a little bit about data abstraction or the idea of creating abstract uh, data types, also known as ADTs. Um, so we're going to cover um, uh, uh, the, the basics about classes, so creating classes, um, accessing um, the, the members, uh, the, what public and private does for classes, um, and um, kind of comparing them to structures, you know, so kind of to get into things. I mean, everything that we talked about a structure applies for a class, so um, uh, they're similar. Um, and, and then we're going to look at uh, implementing uh, member functions for classes. So when we talked about structures, we only had uh, uh, variables, data items, as members. So we're going to be showing uh, adding functions, member functions, uh, to our abstract data types. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, constructors and destructors for our classes. Um, so, um, so uh, in this example um, code, um, we're going to be continuing on from the list type that I did from the previous video on structures. I'm going to be developing it into uh, a more, uh, a bigger um, um, uh, abstract data type. So th th this list type here. Um, so uh, again, just to say this, I mean everything that we we showed for structures applied applies for classes. So in in fact. Structures and classes in C++ are really the same thing. The only difference that I know of, I believe this is the only difference between them, is that by default, everything in a structure is public unless you specify otherwise. And by default, though, it's reversed for a class. So by default, uh, everything in a class is private unless you explicitly make it public. Okay. So what do we mean by private and public? So let me, let me go up and look at the declaration for uh, my abstract uh, list type class here. So um, I didn't mention it before, but for the assignments for, the, for this class, um, um, I, I, you should have a uh, some header documentation before your class, just like you. I, I've talked about having header documentation before functions, okay? But the, the header documentation for the class, you don't have to document the uh, member functions of a class. You use a uh, like a function uh, header for those um, like we've been using. But it is a good idea to give a description of the class and, and, and to maybe uh, document the private member variables of the class. Okay, So, uh, okay, looking at our list type. So, so um, th th the purpose of this class is, is the same as before. We're going to uh, encapsulate uh, and define kind of an abstract list that can hold a variable number of items. And so what we'd like to get to is something that we can add or append items to and we can remove items from so it can grow and shrink. Um, and we don't have to know what the size of it is. So, so a pure, good, um, uh, complete abstract list type uh, would, would manage memory for you. You wouldn't have to worry about um, have I run out of space, have, have I gone be on the end of my list, that kind of thing. So, so, so here we didn't have these in the structure before, uh, the private and public um, keywords, okay? So we, we've declared, we have the same two member variables, uh, these are just variables like our list type for the structure. So we're using exactly the same types of list uh, of, of, of variables to implement our abstract uh, list type here. So we're going to keep track of the size of the list, and we're going to use a regular array of integers to hold the items that our list is managing. Okay. Um, but um, th those those member variables are private now. So by default, they were public for the structure before, but but they're pu they're private here. We do have some things called that are declared to be public, um, and these are actually all functions. Okay, these are known as member functions. So the the terminology is that variables we refer to those as member variables. They go by other names, but uh, member variables um, and uh, functions we call member functions. Okay, um, these first three functions are, are examples of constructors. I'll come back to constructors later. Uh, and this one with the tilde in front is the destructor for the class. Uh, and then we've got some other functions uh, like get size, get item, set item, append item, uh, and, and so on. 
Uh, again, if you remember back to um, uh, my struct video, uh, we had some functions, but they weren't member functions of the structure. They were just a function that took a structure as the first parameter and did something to it. Okay, so to me, that's the way, the way that I think of member functions. Is is what they are? Is they are just functions who take uh, uh, the first parameter is just a reference to uh, the class uh, and then the other parameters. The, the, the thing is though is that the, the, the reference to the class that these member functions work on is implied. Okay, so you don't specify it explicitly, you know, like a like list type that you have to pass it in all the way, uh, all the time, something like that. It's just implied, but it's be, it is being passed in, so a, a reference to one of these list types. Um, and, and everything that you do inside of these member functions works on that list type. You know, explicitly it, it works on like member variables of that of that uh, of that class or the list type in this case. Okay. Um, all right. So so, so those are the member variables. Um, uh, I think I will. Uh, let me let me come back to the member functions. Um, uh, these these getter and setter member functions, these other member functions. Let's look at the constructors first. Okay, so let's let's start off by looking at the constructors. Okay, so uh, th there's three constructors constructors defined for this class. So you can have as many constructors if you as you want for a class. You can only have one destructor, but you can have uh, many constructors. Of course, each constructor has to be different. So each constructor has to have a different signature. So that means you know you can't have two constructors that don't accept any parameters. Uh, like this, All right? So that, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so so they the, the signature, the type of parameters that they uh, take have to differ. So the first per, first constructor doesn't take any parameters. The second one takes two parameters, uh, an integer, a size, and a value. The third one also takes two parameters. But the second the second parameter for this constructor is not an integer; it's an array of integers. So it, it, it is actually different than the first one. Okay. Another thing about constructors is they don't return value. They're not even. They're not void function. They're not even void functions. Okay. So a constructor is a non-returning um, um, uh, function. Uh, okay. It, it's, it's really different from a void function where it, it, it doesn't. I, I don't know how exactly to say it, but void functions uh, you have to declare that they're void, meaning that they don't return anything. But uh, constructors, they, they they just don't have that at all, right? There, there's nothing, in a, they don't return anything. Um, okay, so let's look at the constructor. So the default constructor doesn't do anything except for initialize the, the our list to be empty. So again, remember, uh, there's an implied list um, being uh, passed here for, to every one of these member functions, okay? And then whenever you use a member variable like size here, uh, really, what 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 it is 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 as, as if the 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 class that I passed in, I'm do, I'm accessing the particular member variable like size in this case. Okay, but both of these are implied. You don't have to spell those out for member functions of a class. So uh, it's implied that that it's working on some particular list. Um, and when I set the size variable to zero, I'm setting the, the, the size member variable for some particular item to be zero, right? Uh, and this is the syntax how you specify something to be a member function of, of a class. You have to do list type colon colon and then give the, the class name. So our three class constructors are all going to be list type colon colon list type. So there was the first one, here's the second one. The second one initializes the list to have some number of items, all, uh, and, and all those items have some particular values. By default, the value is zero. So if I, pass, if I say I want a list of size 10, whose values are all initialized to 20, it will create the, it'll create the list of size 10, and then it will initialize, it will set all the items to have a value of 20. Um, and then here's our third constructor um, that it, it, it does something similar, but instead of initializing the values all to one specific value, this initializes all the values to the values that you pass in in the array. Okay, so I actually talk about that last. So I'm kind of skipping ahead a bit here. So, 
Um, and here's the destructor. Let me again also come back to that. But I wanted to get over to showing some of the other member functions. We'll get back and talk about these. But again, the syntax is everything that's a member function of the list type, you say list type colon colon and then the name of the member function. Okay. The return back the return type goes before, but then you know you have to indicate that it's a member function of the class then the name of the member function, and then, you know, like usual, like a regular function, if it has parameters, you have to give the parameter list uh, in here. All right, so we'll come back to those um, um, uh, other member functions. Let's, let's look quickly at the constructors, okay? So if you, if I create a new class of type list type here called empty list, uh, so notice I didn't give it any parameters. You can, I could also have done this the same way by by specifying uh, two empty parentheses. So this this is kind of like you're calling the constructor, uh, and here I'm calling the constructor that that doesn't have any parameters. Okay, so I'm calling this is known as the default constructor uh, for a class. Okay, so if I call that, it will do that that default constructor, uh, and I think. Uh, I didn't try this, but I think I can actually step into that. So let, let's go ahead and, and build and um, um, try and, and run and step into and, and show that it actually does run, step into, runs the default constructor when I declare this empty list variable of type list type, right? So we'll run. Uh, we, we break here at the top. Uh, let's, let's step, uh, let me step into to make certain that I... Uh, yeah, step into yeah so so you see we stepped into I'm actually into the empty constructor so that all that happens for this um, um, uh, this class is that we set size to be zero here so and which size is being set to zero well let me let me return the the, the empty list so empty list has a member variable called size and we just set empty list size to zero by doing that okay. So now um, I'm going to show uh, an example of using um, the get size uh, member function here on, on the next line. And I'll go ahead and step into it too. Oops, sorry, I, I, I messed up. I continued instead of stepping. So um, let me restart that, rerun. Uh, so we stop here again, but let me step over. And let me step in here. If I step in here, we should step into the get size function before we see the, um, the output here. So we'll step in. So we're now in the get size member function. So the get size function in my example code here is, is an example of a getter function. So all it does, it, uh, normally getter functions don't take any input parameters, and all they do is they return one of just one single parameter of the class. So in this case, the get size returns the size parameter. Right? So we'll step out of this now. Um, and uh, remember, the, 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 this was an empty list, so the size should have been zero. So once we step over this, we'll see that it's, it's um, um, the, the value that was returned um, was zero for the size here. Okay. Um, so you might be asking, let me, let me stop that there. Um, so you might be asking, so why didn't I just print out, you know, access the, the size directly like we did for the structure uh, before, something like this. Um, So if I do dot size like that, I should be ax not get size. If I do dot size, the, the name of the, the integer variable, the member variable size, is just size. Okay. So you can already see the squiggly line. So uh, Visual Studio um, is indicating an error of some kind. The um, the the member of list type um, size here. I can't move it here, but, but of list type size is declared. Uh, private. Uh, so I wish, you, again, you know, the, these messages often aren't as clear as they could or should be. It, it's inaccessible because we declared it private. So uh, again, it won't even allow me to run this code. If I try and compile it, um, we'll get a compiler message. So if we build, um, uh, we'll get an error message. Let's see if the error message is any, it's, it's the same error message that, um, uh, oh, this, this is the, the second message because it's a little bit um, clearer. So we can't access the private member, um, so it's because it's declared private. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> declared private in um, 
or list type class, okay? And that is true, and, and that's what private means, okay? So um, private member variables, or even private, you can have private functions as well. So you can have both private member functions and private member variables. Anything that's private, I can't access outside of the class, but I can't access private things inside of the class. So this is, this is what's known as encapsulating uh, data inside of a class in order pr to protect it from being unintentionally modified uh, incorrectly by outside entities, by things outside of my class here. So, you know, and, and we already saw examples, of, you know, I, we, we modified the size private member by initializing it to zero in the constructor. So, so it's perfectly fine to modify private things inside of member functions, things that are members of the class. Um, but it is illegal. Anything you declare private uh, cannot be modified outside of the class. You know, so main function is not a member of my list type class. So I, I just can't do that. If I want to modify it um, and it's private things, that, that's what where we get where we use setter methods uh, for. So um, so yeah, down here I have an example of using the set item setter setter method. So let's skip down to actually let's 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 um, let's um, uh, step into that. So I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to rebuild and rerun. So we'll build here and we'll run. F5 to run. Uh, so here, set item is another member uh, function. So I created another list. Uh, oh, and, and we use the other constructor. I just I just skipped over that. So the second constructor um, um, initialized the list uh, to have five to have five items, all the items were initialized to a value 42. So you can look at that constructor yourself. But notice the syntax. So again, it's kind of like calling uh, a function here. We're passing in the two parameters that, that the second constructor used for the list, uh, 5 and 42. Um, okay, so let's look, let's, uh, let's look at the example of my setter function here. So um, uh, we'll step into it. So set item, uh, there's, there's some, some example of doing a little bit of error checking. So uh, the index is supposed to be the, the index of the item in the list that I want to change. But this list is only of a particular size currently. So in fact, uh, this list size is, uh, i step one more, I think. Uh, yeah, it is five. So, so the, the, the list one uh, that I've stepped into has a size of five, right? Um, so that's a valid, um, uh, I mean, and, and the index we're trying to change is three here, right? So if I tried to change like negative one, I mean, that, that's not valid. Um, or if I tried to change an index that's greater than the end of my list, I don't want to allow that either. So um, we, we disallow that um, as well. We, we'd get an error message if, if we did that. But um, Otherwise, we just set the, the value in our, our list uh, at index 3 to be this new value. We passed in 5, so we want to, we want to change that to have a value of 5. So um, if you look at, then if you look at the third item, we just changed the, the item at index 3, we just changed to a 5, so we should see that it has a 5. All the, in, uh, items, all the items in the list 1 were initialized to 42, but we just changed the item at index 3 to 5. So, so we see that uh, the, 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 using the getter to, to get item, should have stepped into that maybe, so that was an example of another getter function uh, that just gets an item at a particular index and outputs it, so it was 5. If we get a, an item, like the fourth item, it should be 42 from this constructor, so we'll step over that and show the fourth item is 42. Um, and... Um, Oh, and, and yeah, just to show that uh, that error code again. So the size of my list one is only it's only got five items in it. So it's nonsensical to try to set the fiftieth item for a list of, si of size five to some value, which is what we're trying to do here, right? So um, so if, if I step into that, we'll see that, that we're trying to set index fifty, but the size of, of this list is, again is still only five here. If you can see that. So instead, instead of actually setting anything, uh, we'll, we'll display this little error message here. 
right? So this is, the, I mean, this is um, to get to go back to the big picture. I mean, this is why you use setters uh, like this. So you know, my my member variables, uh, the the size and the items are private, so I can make certain that all my um, member functions that change those values. Uh, do it correctly. They don't things like do bounds errors, go past the end of the array, or other things that might be problematic for my my data type, right? So in this case, we refuse to 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 go past the end of my list and do something that doesn't make sense. We we do an error message instead and and do nothing at all. Okay. Um. All right. So I mean, and that's that's the basics of the setters and the getters. Um. Um, let me show um, uh, another uh, useful um, convention in classes. So it's often useful to be able to um, represent the state of an object or the state of an abstract data type um, as a string. Okay, so later on we're going to see more more powerful ways to do this. So again, if you got this into in, into this in programming two, you can use um, um, operator overloading to do this, to actually overload the output stream operator. Uh, but this is kind of working up to that idea. So we, we can have a two-string member function. Uh, so in, instead of getting individual items, I can call this function. The purpose of it is to uh, represent um, my list, uh, list one in this case, uh, as a string. And then so the, the two-string function returns a string, and then I output that string to the Cout uh, stream. Um, so if we look at it, it might be easier to understand if we just t look at what's happening. So let's step in there and look at our two string, okay? So I'm using um, what's known as a string stream here. Um, so, um, um, I mean, this is kind of a big hint. Uh, this is something that I ask you to do in programming assignment two. Um, so, uh, so instead of outputting to C out, I'm going to output to a string stream, an output string stream. Uh, so I just output list size, and I output the size of the list, and then I output all the items in the list. So I use a loop to output the items uh, in the um, um, in the uh, the list one by one here. Okay. So the result, um, I better not go through that loop. The, the result is if we continue to here and uh, step out now. And then finally, we're going to execute the C out statement, and you'll see the result. So, so this line here was the res was the string that was created by the two string uh, method. So it, it um, represents the the current state of my list. The, the The list has five items, has a size of five, and these are the items in it. So the five items were initialized to forty two, except we changed the item at index three to be five. And remember, that is actually the item at index 3. Remember, items in C array start at index 0. So this was the item at index 0, 1, 2, and then 3. Okay? Um, all right. So there's some other... Okay, so um, uh, again, talking about the, uh, this as an abs the, our list type as an abstract data type here. Um, So uh, let me go down to this append items here. So, I mean, all we've done so far with the list is be able to create a list uh, and initialize it uh, to some particular values. And we could set some, some particular value by its index. So we could set particular items. But really, like, like in higher level languages, lists are, are dynamic. So I can like append items to the end of them or append items to the beginning or in the middle of those so they can grow. You can also delete items from, from high level language lists, that kind of thing. So that, that, that's really a more powerful idea of a list. It's much more powerful than arrays in C that are a fixed size and they can't really grow and shrink. So that's kind of what we mean by an abstract data type. We, we don't want to have the, this really kind of low-level array. We want to have something that's much more powerful. I, I can just append items to the end of it or the beginning or in the middle or, or delete items, that kind of thing. So this would be, I, I don't have all those um, um, examples of doing that in this abstract 
list data type, but I do have like an append and prepend. Um, so we'll look at the append real quickly. This video is beginning to run pretty long. That might be the last one I'll look at, and then we'll go back to the destructor here. So let, let's uh, let me continue on, and um, so we can get to this breakpoint. So we'll continue. I'm, I'm right here right now. Uh, and then let's step in here. So the, the, the purpose of this is to append 16 to my list. List 1 we just displayed. So list 1, uh, again like we did before, just has 5 items in it, these 5 items. So it's of size 5. So we want to append 16, 25, and 36 onto the end of the list. Okay. Um, so we'll step in and look at our append item member function. So again there's a little error checking. Uh, in this case we're checking that that our, we're, we're using fixed sized array, so we're trying to see if um, we've run out of space. You know, so um, if uh, the, the, this constant is defined to only be of size 100, so if we have more than 100 items in the list, um, this will prevent us from doing a bounds error again and and trying to write into item 101. Uh, but otherwise. Um, um, all this does, so append is pretty easy uh, to grow my list. All I have to do, since, since I have uh, enough memory to hold 100 items, uh, if my list is smaller than that, I only have five items right now in, in my list. The, the size is five, so I can just uh, add item at index five. Uh, be, because uh, if my list is of size five, the items are at indexes one through four. So I want to add the item at index 5, and then I want to increment size to, to indicate that I now have six items. Okay, So that's, that's how um, append works in this case. So we now have six items. Okay, And uh, we'll append item 25, and we'll append item 36, and we'll now display the list by using that two-string again. Um, so, oh, I got a breakpoint here. That's why it keeps going in there. I forgot about that breakpoint. So let's step over, step over, um, and display our list. So here was the, after appending those three items, 16, 25, and, and 36. All right. Um, there's, a, there's a similar function for prepend. Um, I, won't, I won't show that. I mean, that's more complicated because you want to put the, the value at the beginning of the list instead of the end. So our array, if I want it at, at the front, I have to shift all the items. So you can look at that one yourself. Um, but if... If we call prepend, we want to prepend pre the squares of 49, of 7, 8, and 9 here. So we'll, we'll step over, step over, step over, um, and, and we see, I mean, you know, that's not a definitive test that's working, but we've got these three items uh, here um, um, uh, prepended, okay? So, um, and there's an example of five, some other member function, you know, so this isn't a complete good abstract data type, but, but there's a, it's beginning to be more useful, basically, okay? So, um, so I'm just going to step over those. Uh, you can look at those yourself. Um, and, uh, yeah, and again, this was another example of using the uh, constructor. So this constructor, the, our third constructor, for the list type takes, uh, instead of taking one value and initializing all the same values, this is an example of passing in an array to a function again, but this constructor uh, copies all these values into my list abstract data type. So if we output um, uh, this list two that we just created, um, you can see that it copied those eight items into list two. Okay, then one final thing here. Let's look at the destructor. So the destructor is called for a class when the class goes out of scope. So at this point, I, I might have to go back and count them up, but we created several lists. We created the empty list. That's one list. We created list one. That's a second one. Um, we created another list. That's list two. Um, and we created um, something called list two. So that was, we, we created four, if I count that right, we created four uh, classes of list type. So it's actually four, four lists that are in scope of my main function, okay? So destructors are called when, when objects go out of scope. So if I return from main, these, are all, these were created inside of main, um, unless I do something to, to, to make these persistent, these objects actually go away. I can't refer to those four lists anymore. They were just local to the main function. So that's what's known, known about, that's what's known by going out of scope here. 
So what you should see is that these four functions uh, should call the four lists should call their destructor uh, when we exit out of the main function. The, the destructor doesn't do anything useful right now. It just uh, outputs a message on standard output. Okay, so so I'm going to go ahead and step uh, over, and you see if you do that 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 four uh, destructors were called. Uh, the empty list, the first one, and, and then the other four. The last one we just created had size 8 and so on, right? Um, so, you know, destructors aren't too useful at this point, uh, but later on, um, let me find that destructor here. Later on, we'll show how you use these when we talk about dynamic memory allocation. So what destructors are used for is, is to uh, free up memory that you might have allocated um, uh, dynamically inside of a class to use for an abstract data type. Okay? So I just wanted to, to make certain that you knew how those worked um, when we get to that, when we get to talk about dynamic memory allocation. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, so we talked about creating a class. We talked quite a bit about how classes allow you to, to create abstract data types. Our book goes into much more detail about that, so you definitely need to read the, the chapter about classes uh, here and about uh, using them as, as for data abstraction. Uh, look at constructors and destructors. Um, all right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully that was useful, um, and I will see you all in the next video.